are you the kid in the family that has been a bit misunderstood, the one that people say is too much or the sensitive one? Or do you sometimes wonder, how did I end up with these people? I mean, I come from a different solar system. Are you someone who's really struggled as you've become more conscious and more awakened and you're really growing in, in leaps and bounds in your own self-awareness and your own self-empowerment that you're really discovering a big separation is occurring and you're just not quite tracking with your family the way you'd like to? Well, my name is Sonia Choquette. Welcome to my channel. We're talking about this great transformation, especially one that will be occurring this year in 2024, and what that transformation is actually about, which is awakening your inner senses to read life accurately. And what better area of life to be able to really discern and, and understand what's really going on so you respond in the most creative, intuitive, empowered way than with your own people with your family. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. I'm so excited you're here. We're talking today about how to read the family dynamics accurately so that you can create the best possible opportunities for you to stay connected in good energy with your family, even if they don't get you, or how to leave them without guilt if you've decided this is a fault, this is a lost cause. The biggest thing about family is to know that on a spiritual level, your family is your greatest soul school. That is the hot house incubator that really is going to trigger all the things that your soul personally came into this lifetime to address, to, to move through, patterns to break, karma to complete, opportunity to grow, creativity to incubate. This is where we have a chance to really, truly become our best selves, or it can be our undoing. I've been working with people intuitively for almost, or maybe over 50 years now, around the world, both in classes and one-on-one -on -one mentorings and coachings and personal intuitive readings. And I have to say that of the top five things that make people crazy, really cause a lot of pain, is feeling. And how you want to connect, but the connection is not happening and you don't know what to do. In fact, I have a client who's visiting here in London this weekend whose sister is is really struggling with maybe and what could be the last days of her life with a very unfortunate cancer. And my client has had so much challenge trying to understand and, and get along with and have a good rapport. And now when the days are ending, she's really stressed out because they never got each other. She always felt judged. She always felt defensive. She always felt reactive. And in our last conversation, I said, we, you're, you're, you're reading this from your ego, which will always be inclined to be victimized when people don't instantly align with you and agree with you and see things the way you do. You have to shift and see things from a soul perspective. When she didn't know what that meant, I said, well, if you're going to step way back, what about your sister? Are you taking so personally that she demonstrates with everybody? She said, well, I never thought about that, but I've noticed she has no patience and she's always been extremely critical and harsh with everybody in her life, not just me. Although this is probably the first time I've ever really honestly considered that it's not personal. It's just her nature. Exactly. That's called discernment. This is a quality we need to read life accurately. And here's why. You can't just use your intuitive inner faculties, which are waking up and are necessary to be able to intuitively understand what's really going on and being able to respond to it in the best possible way. You also need to use your outer senses. They're not disposable or dispensable. We need to use them well to see, to look, to listen, to be present, to, to move our ego out of the way and to assess the whole picture instead of just the subjective point of view. When she started recognizing, you know, I've really been so hurt by my sister all these years when I've noticed she doesn't treat anyone else differently than me. So maybe I just have to accept that's part of her nature and that maybe she's just 
scared and controlling. And maybe that I should have compassion at the end days that that, that is how she's ha- had to maybe take care of herself. So that's a benefit of learning to read life accurately using both your outer senses better because most people don't use them at all, really, especially now when everybody's like heads in the phone. We're, we're, we're looking, but we're preoccupied with our thoughts so we don't see. We're, we're arguing with someone in our head from past or future so we're not hearing. We're, we're, we, we're running around and we have things in our hands and we don't even feel them. We eat our food. We don't even taste it because life is pushing us so fast. And we just, at a soul level, we just have lost touch. So learning to, to come back to self, to anchor in the body, to wake up your inner senses and sharpen your outer senses are the skills we need right now to navigate this transformational arc we're in. You know, I've had people write to me and say, this is all woo-woo. And it's not woo-woo. It's realistic. We live in physical bodies. We are in the third dimension. We live in the physical world, but we are not just physical bodies. And we are not just interacting with everybody around us physically. People affect us. They walk in the room and they give you a dirty look. You're hurt. They walk in a room and they're full of laughter. You lift up. Someone walks in the room and attacks you. You're going to feel defensive. And they could just look at you. They don't have to say a thing. So we need to expand our, our, our sense of what is actually happening and especially Especially with the family, because the biggest assumption we make with our family members is they should be like us and they should get me. Now, in most families, I don't see that happening. For example, I have another client that I just adore who's extremely gifted and is awakening some really exciting shamanic skills and beginning to learn about journeying and and, and the soul retrievals and really ancient, deeply profound, mystical abilities. And she said, you know, I grew up in a very conservative, very by the book. And then, you know, what you see is what you get family. And I'm afraid they're going to, they're going to banish me. She was convinced. She wasn't reading them accurately. I said, you know, one of the things my teacher told me is always never assume, you know, anybody never assume, pardon me, speaking so fast, never assume, you know, anybody completely and especially yourself. So assuming that maybe your family would reject you, maybe based on who they were five years ago or 10 years ago, or maybe they have inner interests that they're not sharing because they're assuming the same thing about you. So just casually mention your interests, but don't need them to validate you or, or be on board. Allow them the ability to have a difference. That That's very important in reading the family and the family dynamics is don't force them to necessarily get on board your happy train. You know, we're different. Doesn't mean I can't love you. When my client took that advice, she was playing a tennis game with her sister. And, you know, she was laughing. So we're both so terrible at tennis, but it's something we've always loved. And I've mentioned to her that I was starting to get involved in this shamanic stuff. And she said, my sister just kind of took it in her stride. She says, that's interesting. Not my cup of tea, but interesting for you. Are you enjoying yourself? And that was the end of the conversation of something she had feared for two years. Now, she had read her sister accurately and recognized that though maybe her sister wasn't quite as curious or as open or available to this kind of personal inner spiritual growth, doesn't mean she was going to cut her off. Then she could have saved herself a lot of trouble. Think about your own family. And, you know, we always think about how they don't get me, but do you get them? Now, I was talking to a woman once. She said, my husband is such a stick in the mud. He is such a bore. I just don't even know how I've stayed with him so long. So I invited them. I said, bring them to one of my talks. And she said, oh, God, he'd hate it because you sing and dance at your talks. He would just run out the door. And I said, well, tell him he has permission to do that. Tell him he can leave if he's uncomfortable with no judgment. I said, well, okay, but he probably won't come. Sure enough, he showed up with her. 
not only did he sing and dance along with the rest, but he was having a ball. And he came up to thank me for the evening as he was walking out the door. He said, God, this was fun. Thanks for having inviting me. I just loved it. And the wife was just shocked. And I just winked at her. I don't really know how to wink that well, but it's like, don't assume you know people. Part of the family dynamic is don't decide to put the people you're in in little boxes in your head and then you energetically miss who they are and how they are evolving into as well. And you know, frankly, there are times we need to disassociate from our family. Maybe we can read that they'll never grow. They'll never evolve. Maybe you can try and try and try to get someone on board, but they're not interested. And you can spend a lot of time trying to get someone to relate to you or understand or share an interest, especially a spiritual interest with you. And they're not buying it. They're not going for it. I know I've had this be a major theme in my life. I have been openly rejected by family and associations and people I was related to just because of who I am without having one saying one, one question or even saying one sentence to me. So I do know that some people just won't get you. And what's important about that in reading life accurately is don't suffer that. They're just at a different, they're just, I always say it this way. Consider that they're just in a different band. Maybe you're rock and roll and they're jazz or they're, they're frantic jazz or rap. We just don't have the same vibrational frequency. It's not personal. We don't gel. And that doesn't mean they're wrong or you're wrong. We're just not for each other. Now, reading life accurately, you can spare a whole lot of suffering when you know that. Which brings me to this point. At this time in our lives, in the world, everything's changing so fast, so so exponentially that it's, it's really important that we have this skill. And our closest personal relationships are part of what anchors us, part of what gives us a sense of belonging, which is primal, gives us a sense of connection. And we need to find the skills and develop the awareness in our inner self to maintain the best possible connections with people right now as we grow so we don't feel alone. That's one of the things, in fact, we're trying to heal right now. And maybe you are with the wrong people. This is a time to let go. I have seen people waste years, their whole life with the wrong people, suffering, being lonely, reading, not reading it necessarily correctly and feeling sad or fighting or arguing or feeling they're wrong or I'm wrong or everything's wrong. We need to learn how to read life and make quick decisions, respond to what's really happening and have our soul's best interest in mind. But here's the thing. Your soul's interest is also everybody's soul interest because we share the divine spirit. So it may not be what everybody's ego agrees to, but as we grow and we recognize, you know, we're either going to understand each other and love each other, even though we're very much in different, you know, realms of attention and, and involvement, or we're never going to get each other. And I'm not going to suffer that or waste any more time or think something's wrong with me, I'm going to move on and connect and find my soul family. So I'm inviting you to a very important, very important event coming up, which is the culmination of my life's work. 50 years of teaching, studying people, counseling, learning, being a student myself. I am holding a Read Life beautiful course that I'd like to invite you to consider. You will get in the course. 22 pre-recorded video lessons, which are the skills to read life that you can visit over and over and over again, because you need to. And with each time that you watch a lesson, you're going to learn more and more until you learn to master techniques to read life in any situation. Nine sessions that are live in a, in a, in a virtual classroom with me, where you get to learn from me personally, you get transmissions that elevate you into a higher state of awareness from me, and you get to work with kindred spirits. You get to work with others. We definitely learn faster, better, deeper when we're not just struggling on our own to learn something. So the power of the classroom cannot be overstated.
And in addition to that, I will take time for you to read what energies you most want to pay attention to now and how to grow with that. So I will take a personal assessment of you as well. And there's more. There's 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 wonderful meditations and more everything you need so that you, you do learn to read life accurately and not fail, not miss the most exciting evolution of your life and save you energy, time, waste, and most of all, a sense of disconnection. Our souls and spirits want to connect to the people we love and they want to belong and they want to understand ourselves and one another really clearly and not suffer confusion, miscommunication, isolation, arguments, and drama. So please click the link below and join me in this wonderful life changing experience. Thank you for coming to my channel. I send you all my love.